Hi, my name is Jesse Anderson, and welcome to the screencast. In this screencast, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for dealing with Java 8 lambdas in Eclipse. Now, these tips and tricks are most applicable to big data frameworks because they make extensive use of lambdas. And these sorts of frameworks are things like Apache Spark, Apache Flink, Apache Beam. In this case, I'm going to be showing how to do this in Apache Spark. So here we have some code in front of us, and I'm going to show, write a quick lambda function. And in this lambda function, I'm going to just rough it out. And that's one of the tips that I'm sharing is that it's often difficult to get the lambda function to compile so that you can work with it right. So what I generally do is here in, in Spark, the map function is where we have to specify our, our lambda function. So here we, I'm just going to say input and here let me put the oh that's right we you can't call it input you actually have to call it something else so I'll call it input line okay so as you can see one of the more difficult things about lambda functions just getting them to compile out of the box but here, this is a pretty simple Lambda function. It's not actually doing anything that we, is valuable. So let's go ahead and change that. So part of the reason I start out simple like this is so that we can go through and add some more of the more advanced functionality. So here, we put in our return type. Okay, so we've got, we have things a little more complex now. We can do multi-line Lambdas. So we can do input line and, and start working with that. So the next trick I'm going to show you here is how to get a type for this. So this type is pretty simple. We can just look up here and see that this is an RDD of type string. However, depending on the function, especially for the big data frameworks, map may not always just be here is a here is a string. It could be something like map to pair, or it could be flat map. There, there are all sorts of different possibilities. So the next trip tip I'm going to show is control one. So I'm just going to hit control one once more. You can see that pop up there. One of the things that it gives you the, the ability to do is to add your inferred lambda types. So this lambda type may not always be as simple once again. It may be a more difficult thing and it's much, much easier to have Eclipse do that than to actually have you go through and do that. So now that we have our string, we can do different things with that. So we could do something more interesting like two uppercase, or we could make this a multi-line and do several other things with the line. So we could say input line. And as you can see, my content assist is running the entire time. And that's one of the important parts of getting that Lambda function compiling. Until you do that, you won't be able to get your content assist running. So it's kind of annoying until that point. So I always try to rough out that Lambda function so that I can start working with it from there. So our next thing, now that we've, now that we've done that and we have our, our content assist, this is the sort of uh, Lambda style that I personally prefer. I, I prefer a little bit more vote for both. I like to see what this type coming in is so that I don't have to read through code and have to do a hover to see, oh, it's a string. Uh, the next thing, depending on the map function or the, fac the function that's running the Lambda, the return types can be quite gnarly. And this is especially true for the big data frameworks where Although this will just be a string, sometimes it can be several different layers of nested types. So here I'm going to hit Control 2. And over here on the bottom right, you can see that this little window came up, this content assist. So what you can do is you can either move up and down or you could hit L. And that's what I generally do. So I'm just going to do that from scratch. So I, you'll notice that where my where my cursor is, it's on input. I hit control two, and then I'm going to hit L. And as you can see, it's taken that type, that return type, and automatically generated that for me. So now I can say upper case, and I didn't have to worry about figuring out what this return type is from these. 
Although this is once again a pretty simple return type, once you get deeper into the other uh, more complex return types, this is quite helpful in terms of figuring out what is being returned. So I hope you found these three tips with, with uh, Lambda functions helpful. If you'd like to get more information about things like Apache Spark, and not just see the basics, but also see the advanced features of Apache Spark and other big data technologies, you can join me in my professional data engineering. The link is in the description. Thank you again for watching.